Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you, uh, give you a little bit more information about the ordinances that are being proposed that will be voted on on June the 27th before the Dallas City Council regarding animal ordinances. So um, there are a bunch of changes. I want, wanted to share with you my biggest concern in this change, and, and I really want to hear from you to hear what you think because this directly affects animal cruelty. Um, we don't have a process, a, a workable process or system for investigating animal cruelty, reporting animal cruelty, prosecuting animal cruelty. I mean, it, the system is so broken. It's been broken for three years, um, it, and it's just, it's just, you know, it's just a mess. So as, as Dallas Animal Services gets their act together, you know, with their shelter, getting their shelter back together and things moving and getting the animals out, and they're doing a good job, increasing their live release, live release rate, um, one of the things that they're asking for in this ordinance is to expand their power for warrantless seizure. So in, in, the, in the United States, in order for any of your property to be seized, you have to have a warrant for a judge, from a judge. Um, what the city ordinances do in, text, in, in Dallas is they allow, they grant uh, Dallas Animal Services ACOs the authority to seize without a warrant. So it's kind of like trumping uh, the federal and state statutes on that. And it's, you know, it's things like a loose dog. You know, of course we want them to be able to pick up a loose dog. That's what we've been yelling about for four years. Um, and if we have the approval to seize for protective custody, um, if an animal is thought to have rabies or is sick and needs to be quarantined, we, they have the authority to seize for that. Um, if there's, if it's an animal that's being, that's prohibited in the city, like a tiger or a bear or an elephant or something, you know, they can, they can seize for that. If it's, if an animal is posing a threat to health, um, public health and safety, they certainly have the right to seize that, um, animal without a warrant. But what they're doing in this proposed ordinance is they're adding one more thing. And they're, they want to be able to have the authority to seize an animal if it, and I'm quoting, displays signs and symptoms of extreme health concerns. So... For example, um, when we had that really bad freeze between Christmas and New Year, the um, anyone who was allowing leaving their animal outside, the ACO could come onto the property and they could seize that animal without a warrant. Um, anyone in this extreme heat that's leaving their animal outside without food, water, or shelter, or closely confined so that it's not getting air, doesn't have food, water, um, they could seize that animal without a warrant. This sounds really good, and I, I would love to give this power to DAS animal control officers, but I want to make you aware of some legal issues that I think are really important. And I think that in the long run, this really hurts us and just muddies the water on animal cruelty worse than it already is. So my first question is, well, after you bring the animal in from your warrantless seizure, then what? Are you going to go to a judge and get a, a warrant then after that? Um, because the judge is going to say, well, you know, what was your cause? What, why, what caused you to believe that this animal was um, an extreme health concern? Number one, we don't define what extreme health concern means in our city ordinances. It's not defined in the state uh, statutes either. So it's very nebulous. It's just whatever the ACO thinks. Um, and I think the best of our ACOs, I think they want to do the best thing, but all it takes is just, I mean, it's just not good law. Um, and if they don't get the warrant, now we're in trouble. So the second thing is, what if the owner just gives the animal up? You seize the animal, you're not pressing charges, and now the owner says, fine, just take the animal, I don't want it back. I don't wanna deal with the city, I don't wanna deal with fines, I don't wanna, you know, whatever. Just And then I'll go get another one, chain it in the backyard, leave it out in all weather. We know it's done every single day. So, and the third thing is, there's no clear path for cruelty prosecution. So even if they seize this animal under warrantless seizure, and then they go get a warrant from a judge saying, oh, it was okay for you to, to, to do that. What process do we put that in for, for cruelty? So there's nothing in the ordinances that allow the ACOs to charge the owner for anything. They don't get punished in any way. There's no citation. There, there's nothing. They're not going to prosecute under the state cruelty laws. Or if they are, how are they going to get from state cruelty laws to prosecution? Because 
our DAS animal control officers do not have authority to file cruelty charges with our DA's office for prosecution. I'm going to repeat that. Our Dallas Animal Services animal control officers do not have the authority to bring a case of cruelty before the Dallas County District Attorney's Office for prosecution. So now you've got a, a situation where you, you know, you're saying you're, you're bringing this animal in because of extreme health concerns, whatever that means, because it's not defined, but you bring it in and now you want to do what? Take it away from the owner? Okay, they're just gonna go get another one. Are you gonna pursue cruelty charges? Okay, let's perfect your seizure. Let's go get, uh, you know, a post seizure warrant and, and get that covered. And then uh, it better have cause because if you don't, you're not going to get that warrant. Now you're now you're really in trouble. <laughs> but let's say you get the warrant. And then how do you get this case to the DA for prosecution? Well, now you're handling evidence, and you don't have the authority to file cruelty cases. You don't have the authority to manage that evidence and to pursue an investigation that would then be taken to the DA. So somehow the police department needs to get involved and, and take that over. Now, the other thing that could happen is you could get that warrant and you could file, you could file for a civil seizure warrant, which would then within 10 days, you have a custody hearing. And after those 10 days, if the, if the, at the custody hearing, the judge can give custody to Dallas Animal Services. Well, now the animal's owned by the city um, and they can do whatever they want to with that animal. They don't have to hold on to it uh, to pursue criminal charges, but they have to go through that civil procedure in order to do that. So that's, that's a minimum, minimum 10 day process. And we just decreased hold times from 10 days to five days in this ordinance. But now we wanna seize animals that if we're actually going to pursue cruelty charges and we're going to pursue our warrants, then those animals are going to be held for 10 days. So I, I, I appreciate the effort. I really do. But I don't think until we have a clear path to prosecution and some kind of way to actually punish the owners, again, we're back to making ordinances that punish and put at risk our Dallas animals without having a path to punishing the owners. So I know it would be really difficult for animal advocates to oppose this particular piece of uh, this particular language in um, that they're proposing in the ordinances, but and it's a big ask, but I wanna ask you to encourage your city council members in Dallas to not, to, to strike this language, to not allow Dallas Animal Services to seize um, for uh, extreme health concerns. And I, I mean, this just, it's so difficult to wrap your head around because you really want those animals out of that situation. But what we really want are animal cruelty charges followed through because the, the bottom line of what's going to happen is that animal is going to get out of that situation and thank God they will. But another one is going to be put into that situation. And that's the problem. So until we start finding ways to hold owners accountable, I think we're putting the cart before the horse. I appreciate the the effort. Um, I, I really do, but we can't do half measures. We can't. Um, I would never want someone to take this ordinance and point to it and say, look, look, we're saving these animals from extreme health concerns and we're picking them up out of the cold and out of the extreme heat. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a great thing? And I'm sitting, and my answer would be, you know what, as long as those owners are out there and they can keep getting animals and keep doing it again, it's not a great thing. You're just perpetuating a cycle, and that concerns me. So I hope that you'll, um, that you'll consider letting your city council members know about your concern on this particular issue. If you want to leave the language in, that's fine. Let's leave the language in. But then we really have to turn up the heat on making sure that animal cruelty is prosecuted in Dallas and that they get their act together and figure out how this is going to be done and start getting some success in prosecuting animal cruelty.